Hi. We touched on secondary reflex inhibition, so I thought I'd talk a little bit more about it now in a little bit more detail. Um, actually, you should be comfortable with the idea from the lumbar spine. The lumbar spine, the primary reflex inhibition is in multivitus, um, possibly um, psoas, um, and possibly transverse abdominis. But these are the muscles that directly attach to the vertebra and so can become directly inhibited, so primary inhibition. However, when we test eccentric contraction from the end of range, um, and there is inhibition, then this breaking weakness occurs, and it occurs very suddenly, it just gives way. Um, and these muscles now are not attached directly to the vertebrae. We're talking about now the extensors and the abdominal muscles, other than transverse abdominis, the rotator muscles of the trunk. Now, as these do not attach directly to the vertebra, then whether or not you can get inhibition from these muscles is a different issue, and probably not. So my feeling is that what's happening is that there is no inhibition of these muscles under normal circumstances. Um, there is primary inhibition of the, um, of the segmental muscles, the stabilizing muscles of the spine. But when you apply an eccentric contraction at the end of the range and the segment is unstable, it starts to give under that pressure. And then that giving way increases misproprioception or does something else. And then those big muscles become inhibited and give way which means that this is not a continuous state as it is with the primary stabilizers. So you're not gonna find um, hypotonicity in these muscles. Um, and you're not gonna find normal weakness because if the spine is stable when you're doing concentric contractions or contractions in the mid range, which are concentric, then there's no giving way. So you don't see this type of inhibition. So I think this is primary inhibition. Now in the thoracic spine, you see the same thing. Um, primary inhibition occurs, occurs in the stabilizing muscles of the shoulder as it does in elsewhere. So these stabilizers um, become inhibited and they cannot force the humeral head into the wing when it allows it to slide around. Um, primary inhibition. These ones you'll find, this inhibition you'll find with the arm by the side if you're doing, for example, it usually is. Um, resisted abduction and um, it's a lateral rotation. So if you're pushing these things medially um, or into adduction, then you get the, it gives way on you. This is primary um, reflex inhibition. If that isn't there though, and then when you take the arm up into elevation and abduction, this sort of position there, and then you force it down into um, adduction and depression, if you like, that's when it breaks and gives way. Now, this is only happening when you're up in this area. Here, you can get rid of that inhibition by basically wobbling the, the appropriate thoracic segment. So you input increased proprioception, which I assume stabilizes the segment and some nerves it does in the lumbar spine. And now these you don't get that wobbling of the segment um, when you're forcing it down from the, uh, an external range and so they become stable. You see pretty much the same thing as you do in the lumbar spine. So this to me is secondary instability. Now, if you have secondary instability, whether it's a primary, whether it's the stabilized muscles or the big muscles, I'm not sure, probably it's the big muscles. But if these give way, um, it indicates that the joint's unstable anyway. So often what you'll see is the primary instability is present as is the um, secondary instability. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen primary instability without secondary instability. Well, I've certainly seen primary instability without secondary instability. At least I think I'm saying that right. Primary instability without secondary instability. I've seen secondary instability without primary instability. I haven't seen. So um, if the big muscles give way, then the joint gives way. Um, so you still get the same damage to it as if it's primary reflex inhibition. Um, so what you do is you test the primary um, stabilizers for primary instability. 
you find they're done, you wobble the shoulder, then retest and elevate, or test it again, it's okay. Then retest and elevation, you find it's still weak, then this is secondary instability. You wobble the thorax and you'll stabilize those as well. So secondary instability can produce as much of a problem as does primary instability, as far as etiology is concerned. Um, but it's gotta be in a certain type of that person, somebody who's working at a higher range. Um, but it does show, even if it isn't directly involved with the shoulder problem, it does show that you've got a thoracic problem, which in itself can be an issue for the shoulder. So primary instability, secondary instability. Hope that explains it. If not, um, discuss this on the Zoom session with your Zoom instructor. All right, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye.